All right, guys, we're looking at the counterweight portion of the arbor press where the handle comes and the ratcheting action happens. We have a fair amount of wear right here. Um, this isn't the pin, but it kind of is an example here. So the pin comes in and in the non-compound mode, the pin rests on this lip right here. And then when you activate the compound mode, it comes forward, comes back into this pocket and then rests right here. Now I have seen these with worse wear, um, but it is fairly worn. And we're coming this far, so we're gonna correct it. So there's a number of ways you can do this, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut this off and mill it so that it's nice and flat, and then maybe I'll kiss this end here. And then I will take a piece of cast iron and braise it in. Now the cast iron pressure is gonna be in compression here. So really all that the braise is doing is just holding it in place and the braise should be sufficiently strong for that uh, as long as we get a good braise. Now the shaft size here is 1.875. That's what the shaft is for. And in a perfect world, uh, I would have a one and three sixteenths end mill and I could just come in here and make it perfect. Now probably, even if that was the case, it'd be a little tight. You need some room for clearance. Um, and this is, you know, 100 years old. So I doubt it was made to that level of precision. What we do have is one and a quarter, um, which is, uh, I'd have to do my math, maybe 60, 70 thousandths oversized. Uh, more, a little more oversized than I would like, but it is the cutter I have and it is uh, deep enough to make it in one pass. So once we go ahead and put this piece in here, I'm gonna make sure that it comes over farther and then we'll come in here and machine this pocket out uh, with inch and a quarter and that should give us like 20 or 30 thousandths on each side of the pin. So we're gonna start by getting this extra just lopped off. I might even do that in the bandsaw and then we'll get it over the K&T mill and get this pocket cleaned up and get our piece of cast iron prepared. Over here at the bridge port, uh, we have a setup here. We're gonna try to come in here and clean up this back side so that way we can go ahead and uh, get this piece of cast iron fit in there real nice. Uh, it doesn't need to be perfectly flat, but I figured we'll just mill it um, and then I can come a little bit farther back and clean up this radius. I don't love this setup. Uh, this is clamped fairly rigid, but this cutter is only a two flute. Um, and also, you know, this machine is just not made for something this large. I can't get this set up over in my horizontal. I just can't get the fixturing right. Um, so we're gonna take it slow and see how we do. Running about 500 RPMs. We're just gonna come in here and touch off. Just gonna lock that axis. All right, there's touch off. I'm gonna zero, we're gonna lock this axis and we're gonna just kinda crank out. Taking a chip, I'm gonna do 10 thousandths. And we're gonna see how that does. We got the gibbs tight here to try to minimize backlash. And it is cast iron, which is a saving grace. But yeah, I can definitely hear we're gonna be getting some chatter. I'm just gonna take it slow. It is a sharp cutter, which is good. I'll bring you back once we get cleaned up. Thirty thousandths, we'll see if we're a little overzealous. So a 20 additional. I decided I was gonna go ahead and plunge, cut this, just because it, the radius was too big and just too much force. So I'm gonna come in here and plunge down to clean up that radius, and then we'll go ahead and back out. I just got a real slow feed up on the knee.
All right, we got this out of the mill and got it all cleaned up. I went ahead and wire brushed this area, removed all the paint, and then we went ahead and beveled this out nice and heavy. And then our bottom piece here, I beveled nice and heavy, and then we have the round to match the radius. So it's a nice flat fit because we milled both sides and I have a little bit of extra overhang on both sides. When we're done, we'll go ahead and clean up these faces and there'll be extra material on the three sides. Um, so now I'm gonna come in here and just use like a bolt spreader to kind of hold this in place um, while we're go ahead and braise it so I can move it around in the vise and it won't wanna fall out. And then we'll come in here and we'll fill these V's and the front uh, with braise and that should be perfectly fine. All right guys, we're gonna use a bigger torch here just to get this preheated a little quicker and then I'll switch to my brazing torch and we'll start to get this brazed. All right, we'll just get this preheated first. I can get a little bit more heat out of this. So we'll start with this. All right, we got switched over to our brazing torch. So we're gonna get this thing going. Get some heat back in the part. For brazing rod, I'm gonna be using a flux coated brazing rod. Normally I use uh, just flux in a straight brazing rod, but I wanna give this a try. I'm hoping it'll give me a little bit better results uh, just because it's gonna be able to allow plenty of flux to get on there. So we'll see. Just getting this joint preheated here. You know when you're brazing, you're looking for a nice orange. I got the goggles on. It's a little hard to see. And this part's rather large also. But I think we're getting there. I'm gonna switch to a different rod. Might not have enough heat, but uh, usually I'm a little more successful than this, so. All right, I think I had too much, uh, too much gas. Let's take this a second try. It's ugly, but I think we're getting there. All 
All right, guys, we got this fully brazed out. A uh, couple things. First off, when I started, I just had the gas set too high. I was getting some issues. I actually burned too much of this corner, and I had to build that up with braze, which is a little bit unfortunate. But uh, the benefit here is I made this piece oversize in both directions by like a 16th and in this direction. So by the time we machine that out, and since I built it up anyway, we have plenty of extra material, which is what's really nice when you V everything out real great. And then I went ahead and brazed in the bottom. It's still really hot. Um, I was able to get everything dialed in and I think it turned out really good. I'll put the heat blanket on it, let it sit for a couple hours, maybe longer, we'll see. Let it cool down slowly. And then uh, once it's fully uh, cooled down, we'll come back clean it up with a wire brush, grind it down a little bit, and then get it milled and finished out. All right, we got our counterweighted piece set up here in the mill with our buildup brazed in and we're ready to mill this out. Uh, the first thing I wanna mention is this is not an ideal cutter to use, but it's what I got, so we're gonna try it out. It's nice and sharp, uh, but I wish it had more flutes and obviously I wish it was a little bit more rigid, but we do have it in the bridge port uh, just cause that's the setup we have. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna step mill this in three different heights. Um, and it is gonna make a full width pass. Now I don't think we're taking off a lot, uh, maybe like 50, 60 thousandths on that side and we're just gonna graze this side, maybe five, 10 thousandths. So we're coming here and we'll get this machined out and we'll see how we look. Running about 600 RPMs. And we're gonna come in slow. We got all the axes locked. Let me lock the knee. And we'll see how we do. I know cutting the flux is gonna kinda suck, but we'll just take it slow. so good. We're going ahead and plunge cutting the corner. That way the load on the cutter is not as much as opposed to if we come right up to that shoulder. Seems to be working well so far. Right, guys I'm super happy with how that braze turned out it looked really really nice once we got it all cleaned up this is nice and parallel nice and flat um, our pin should fit in there real nice with a little bit of clearance on both sides and our braze turned out really good uh, you can see a real nice line here down the front and in the crack and our radius turned out real nice overall that turned out uh, better than I expected the only issue we really had was that end mill was way too much for the bridge port and being too flute, not ideal. Um, but other than that, we knew that was gonna happen. Really happy with how this turned out and we can continue on working on this piece.